Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2017 Subaru Crosstrek, we're going to be showing you how to install the Demco Supplemental Braking System. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure that this is going to work for you. So before we get too carried away actually talking about the braking system and kind of checking it out, uh, I figured it'd be useful to just kind of refresh yourselves and touch base on the main components that we're going to need to flat tow our vehicle down the road in the first place. There's going to be a total of five that we're going to need. The first one's going to be our base plate. And what that's going to do is provide us with a, uh, a solid and reliable connection point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. That tow bar is going to be the second component. And this is going to be the physical link that actually connects the front of your Subaru to the back of your motorhome. The third main component will be safety cables and these are pretty straightforward uh, these are just there in the event of an unlikely disconnect they're going to keep everything paired together the fourth main component is going to be your tow bar wiring and what that's going to do is transfer the lighting functions from the back of your coach to the back of your subaru uh, keeping you safe and legal and last but not least the fifth main component is going to be a supplemental braking system and what this is going to do is hit the brakes in your cross track whenever you hit the brakes in your rv uh, helping to bring you to a complete and more predictable stop so with that out of the way why don't we just kind of talk about braking systems in general so for me i usually recommend three different ones and it's really just going to depend on your particular needs and your particular setup so uh, the stay and play the one that we're checking out today that is a permanent type system and that's one of my favorites it's super reliable and really easy to use so i mean what more can you really ask for you know um, with that said that's going to be able to work with motorhomes that have hydraulic brakes okay if your motorhome has air brakes you're not going to be able to use that this particular system and you'll need to choose another one the one that i would recommend would be the demco uh, it's called the air force one essentially it is very similar to this setup here it's a permanent type system but it's specifically designed to work with motorhomes that have air brakes and that kit's an awesome setup too uh, again very reliable you rarely run into any issues and it's super easy to set up uh, essentially once it's installed you don't even have to do anything you just kind of hook up to your motorhome and and you're ready to go so <clears throat> really straightforward there and then you have some uh, braking systems which are portable type braking systems and the one uh, as of late that we've had quite a bit of luck with is the brake buddy select three all right and that's going to be able to work with uh, pretty much everything you know your, your motorhomes with hydraulic brakes ones that have air brakes if your vehicle's a hybrid and so on those uh, really doesn't matter they're going to be able to work and with that particular system um, you know it has adjustable legs and everything and it just seems to fit in a lot of vehicles pretty good um, the thing is with those um, you know you're gonna have to set it up and, and take it out every time you want to use it not a huge deal but it is one step and then it's something that you're gonna have to think about storing as well but the benefit is nothing's permanent and if you're someone that changes their towed vehicle a lot or maybe has a couple cars that you tow uh, that's gonna be a great option for you so talking to you know a lot of people that flat tow it seems like one of the important things is you know having something that's going to be smooth whenever you're pulling it down the road and believe it or not a braking system is going to um, affect that and with this one it should be pretty good um, and that's because it is a proportional style braking system and so what that means is uh, your braking pressure is going to be matched so whenever you apply the brakes in the motorhome it's going to apply the brakes in your towed vehicle so for example um, let's just say if you're kind of rolling to a stop maybe there's a red light up ahead and you're kind of halfway on the brake and off of it and kind of just slowing yourself down like you normally would the brake pedal in your vehicle is going to do the same thing on the other hand let's say if maybe you're going down the highway and um you know there's an accident up ahead uh, and you got to come to an emergency stop and so you really got to stand on that brake pedal and give her everything she's got the uh, brake in her subaru is going to do the same thing and so what that's going to translate to is 
um, you know, a much smoother experience. You're not going to feel the car wanting to drag you down or, or you know, the car kind of wanting to push you around. Everything's going to be nice and smooth, and which in turn is going to make your driving experience, you know, that much better. And your braking is going to be much more controlled and predictable. One thing uh, that this system does offer is the wireless coach link monitor, and these are pretty cool. They've been getting more and more popular, uh, at least here. So you've got uh, quite a few times to kind of play with them and, and see how they work, and they do a pretty good job. Um, what this is going to do, it plugs into a 12 volt outlet. Um, it's going to power up, and this is going to uh, receive a signal from your braking system whenever the brakes are applied. So I can't show you the LEDs lighting up because you actually have to be moving. If we just hit the brakes when we're sitting still, the system's not going to activate because it doesn't really need to apply the brakes. But what happens is when you are going to be moving and you apply the brakes, this will light up red, letting you know everything is working properly. And, um, you know, you can kind of help, you kind of keep an eye on things. You know, if you have a breakaway, this will start buzzing and lighting up and, and going crazy and doing its thing. Um, and you know, it's just never a bad thing to kind of keep an eye on things to make sure this is working. If it's working and then at one point, you know, something feels a little off and you're hitting your brakes and nothing's happening here, this is a good indication that you probably should should swing off to the side of the road somewhere, pull over and kind of check things out. So a uh, good thing to have and something that I could definitely see myself using. So now inside of our towed vehicle, I just kind of want to show you guys uh, what you're going to need to do to activate the system whenever you're ready to flat tow super simple down here i have the g-force controller mounted up which is a small box and there's an on off switch so whenever you're not flat towing you leave it off when you're all hooked up and ready to roll turn it to the on position and then that just leaves us with one more thing to do up front now up front you're just going to have to take your tether here connect one of it one end of it to your motorhome safety chain openings and the other end to your breakaway switch here and that's all it takes to set this up. You're ready to flat tow uh, once obviously all your other components are hooked up. But since we're right here, let's kind of talk about this breakaway switch. Uh, this is gonna be a safety device. And what happens is if this were to get pulled out, so like in the event of an unlikely disconnect, when this gets pulled out, it's gonna activate your braking system, turning on the brakes in your Subaru and helping you to get things back under control. So at the end of the day, a braking system you really can't go wrong with. You know, like I said, we've had a ton of experience with them and they're really reliable. Every now and again, we'll run into a small issue, but generally speaking, uh, everything works the way it should almost every single time. So, um, you know, if you're someone that's looking for a permanent type braking system and your motor home has hydraulic brakes, definitely a good one to roll with. Um, now, as far as the installation goes, I'm not gonna lie, it's involved. You know, there's quite a few wires you have to hook up and things like that, but good news is you only have to do it one time and once it's installed, you're done. So as long as you stay focused, uh, you know, give yourself a little bit of time to get this done, really shouldn't run into a ton of different issues. But speaking of that, why don't we go ahead, pull into the garage and do that together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the front of our Subaru. And first thing that we're gonna do is, is mount up a couple of our main components. So. First one being our main operating unit, which is this piece right here. So what I actually done was mounted this to our fuse box cover, okay? And it looks tight, but the hood does close and everything, and you actually have about a hand's worth of clearance there at the top, so uh, we're in good shape. <clears throat> what I did was just drill a couple holes in the fuse box cover, and then just use zip ties to secure it and this thing is solid, it is not going anywhere. Keep in mind though, when you do this, whenever we start to, <clears throat> excuse me, route all of our wiring and stuff, you wanna leave enough slack in it, that way you can open it up if you ever need to service it and set it off to the side. If you make everything super tight, you're not gonna be able to do that. So uh, just something to keep in mind. Now we can mount up what's called our breakaway switch, which is this component here. And the way I did that, was I used this bracket. So a lot of times your diode wiring kits will come with this type of bracket and you can use it. If not, you can pick it up separately. But what I did is right here along this edge, I actually bent that up and then simply just mounted it to our uh, base plate using a worm clamp. 
drilled a small hole in the bottom of it and then used a nut and a bolt to secure our breakaway switch to it. While we're right here, we might as well route the wiring coming off of our breakaway switch up towards our operating unit. So there's a black wire and an orange wire. And I just routed this along here and over through this opening. Now keep in mind, everything's loose right now. Once we have it all together, we can come back, clean up our wiring and everything else. But with that said, it just comes through this opening, which in turn comes out right up to here. And uh, we can just hook it up while we're right here as well. So the blue wire coming out of the main operating unit, that's gonna get connected to the black wire from our breakaway switch using a butt connector. The orange wire from our breakaway switch, that's gonna get connected to the brown wire that's coming out of our main operating unit. Now with this setup though, we got something, uh, we need to do something a little different. So you're gonna take your orange breakaway switch wire into one end of the buck connector, the brown operating unit wire into the, this end, and you're also gonna take your included fuse holder, twist those wires together with the brown wire and put that into one end of the buck connector. And uh, with it like that, now what we're able to do is set up our fuse holder, that way we can connect it to the positive battery terminal. So with our fuse holder here, you wanna make sure that the fuse is not installed in it. We're gonna do that at the very end, once everything is hooked up. But we're going to strip back the insulation, exposing that bare wire. You're gonna take a ring terminal, put that over the end, and crimp it on. And now we can grab a, I believe this is a 12 millimeter. Yep, a 12 millimeter socket. And remove this nut on the positive battery terminal. Take our ring terminal slide that over the stud and we'll simply just tighten our nut back down. Now what we can do, we're going to hook up our vacuum line that's coming out of our operating unit. What we're going to do is come here to the main vacuum line coming off of our engine's intake manifold that runs to our vehicle's brake booster and we need to splice into the line. So right here uh, I cut the line, took the check valve, and put the uh, check valve in so this just presses into the line. You know, it, nothing crazy there, it just pushes right in. You want the black side of the check valve to face towards the engine. And then if we come uh, back a little bit, we need to cut into the line again and install a T fitting. All right, try to stay in this area because back here a little ways, where it's straight, it'd be tempting to cut there, but there's actually a hard spot in the line and that's a factory check valve that's inside of the line. So we don't want to damage that. So come up here a little bit, cut the line again, take your T-fitting, slide each end into the hose. And then off our final T, you're gonna take, looks like maybe about two foot of uh, hose that comes with the kit, slide that on the T, loop it around and bring it to the check valve here coming out of our main operating unit. What we can do now is work on a couple things here inside the vehicle and so primarily we're going to be uh, underneath the driver's side dashboard. First thing we're going to focus on is the g-force controller which is this component here and so I have this mounted on the driver's side kick panel and a couple things to pay attention to when you're mounting this. Um, you want this knob to face towards the front of the vehicle and you want this to be as uh, square and straight and level as possible so um, you know turns out pretty good right here actually you didn't have to really uh, do a whole lot of uh, modifications or adjustments with this so I simply just use the provided uh, screws to screw it to the kick panel when you're doing that Pay attention because there are some wires and stuff that run back there. You don't want to drill into them, so be conscious of that. And 
there's going to be a bundle of wire that comes off the back of it that will eventually uh, run into the engine compartment. But for now, let's go ahead and mount up our wireless transmitter. For our wireless transmitter, uh, we actually have this fuse panel uh, there. And I actually just mounted it to the back of that. And uh, it worked out really good because it's actually, they give you some hook and loop fasteners. So it doesn't interfere with your, your fuse panel chart, if you will. And you can still just pull this off if you ever need to check your fuses and see which one does what. So pretty straightforward. Make sure the surfaces are clean um, before you stick that on there. And I put it as far over to the left as possible. That way we can kind of tuck our wire there in the side and we're not gonna have to worry about it getting pinched or anything along those lines. So now we are going to start to route some of our wiring and, and, and uh, airline tubing into the engine compartment. There's a grommet up here, uh, which I'll show you in a minute that we ran everything through. But for now, we kind of want to prep everything. That way we can just do this one time and have all the wires and everything ran once so we're not coming back and forth and doing this. So uh, our G-Force wires will go through there. Our nylon air tube will go through there. The tubing that uh, is going to connect to our operating unit and our actuator cylinder, which will eventually go on our brake pedal arm. And then I took three additional wires. So these don't come with the kit, um, but I like to do this just in case if we need them. A lot of times you are going to, uh, but these are just wires, maybe six or eight foot long each. Um, and I marked them. So one of the wires I put on some white paint, other one some yellow paint, the other one some black paint on both ends. That way, uh, you know, we can kind of keep track of which one's which. But one of those wires I actually connected to the white wire here on our wireless transmitter. The white wire is going to be a ground wire and so eventually we're going to ground this out inside the engine compartment. So I did that. With that said, got all those everything ready and ran them through that grommet into the engine compartment. So here's what this grommet looks like. Um, you may or may not have to actually poke a hole or two in it. Um, in our case, mine was kind of closed off, but I just took a screwdriver, kind of poked it through, uh, poked it through there and it popped right open. And um, I did that to both of, the, both of the holes there and that's how I ran my wires and our airline tubing up into the engine compartment. So here's where our tubing came on up. Our wires are just right below it. But we'll do our airline tube first, so I ran it over and kind of followed the uh, loop here on our vacuum line. And this is gonna get plugged into this fitting here on our operating unit. Before you plug it in, you wanna make sure that the end has a nice clean straight cut. So you can use a tool like this or a razor edge or they even have um, uh, nylon tubing cutters you can use. You wanna avoid a regular pair of snips because it'll probably kink it and then it'll leak, but. So give it a good clean cut like that. And with these quick connects, um, they simply just kind of plug right in. So you'll feel it kind of seat, pull back on it a little bit. If it stays in there, you know we're in good shape. Now let's focus on the wiring portion. So, uh, you know, our wires come through here from our G-Force controller. We're gonna have a black G-Force controller wire as well as a red one. Those are gonna get hooked up to the red wire that comes from our main operating unit. So red to red, and the black wire from our main operating unit. So black to black. And I just did that using a couple of buck connectors. Now we can focus on our ground wires. So the white wire coming from the G-Force controller crimped on a ring terminal and uses factory ground posts to ground it out. And while we were in here, if you remember that extra black wire that we had that we hooked up to our wireless coach link monitor, this one here, the black wire that we colored white on, I also grounded that. And then just thinking ahead, one of the extra black wires, another one that we ran with the yellow paint on it, I also grounded that out. And eventually that's gonna be hooked up to our brake light relay ground. 
So I just did this all now, that way it's in here and it makes it a little bit easier when we go to hook those components up. But other than that, that should take care of all of our grounds. For the remaining G-Force controller wires, we're gonna have a green one and a yellow one. And these are gonna tap into our existing diode wiring. Okay, so here's our existing diode wiring there, and we'll just go color for color. So I cut the diode wiring in half, crimped on a buck connector on one end. The other two, the green G-Force controller wire and the other end of our existing diode wire, strip them back, ran them together, put them into the other end of the buck connector. Same deal with the yellow, so yellow to yellow. And then, like I said before, um, for our brake light relay that we're eventually gonna do, um, that's gonna tie into the to, to the brown wire here from our diode wiring. And so I took that final uh, extra black wire that I ran, the one that I didn't paint at all, or I had put black marks on it rather. Um, I hooked that into our brown diode wire here. So now what we can do is move back inside of our vehicle and take care of the actuator cylinder, which is this component here. So pretty straightforward. Um, really wasn't too bad even with our car being a stick shift and having an extra pedal so for those of you that have an automatic it should be even easier to work around but we're going to take the uh, actuator cylinder here and that's going to bolt to your brake pedal arm and then there's going to be an anchor so the cable that comes off the, the brake pedal arm it runs to an anchor and that gets attached to the firewall so I cut our carpet out and I took the bracket um, that comes with it there's a little plastic fastener that was holding the carpet there I just put that on the far left side of the bracket and that actually worked pretty good it just kind of held it in place took a self tapping screw run it in the middle of the bracket and then on the far outside one that's where I attached our anchor and the whole point of this you want to make sure your cable is nice and straight um, that way we get maximum performance when we push a brake pedal down it's gonna be a nice straight shot and you also want a little bit of slack in there too. So about an eighth of an inch, give or take, um, uh, something like that. So you want a little bit of movement in it. So once you have that complete, you can take that airline tube that we ran earlier, cut it nice and straight, and simply just plug it right into the actuator cylinder just like we did uh, on the operating unit under the hood. Now all that's left to do is put our fuse into the holder and we can turn our system on by going to our G-Force controller and flipping the switch into the on position. And now we're gonna do a quick test to make sure the system operates. So just a real quick way that we can test our braking system is just to pull out the breakaway switch. And when we do that, we should hear our system activate and the brake pedal be pushed down. Now that our vehicle side is done, all we're gonna have to do is come into our motorhome and hook up our wireless coach link. So really straightforward here. You just set this in a spot that you like and you're gonna need a 12 volt uh, cigarette outlet type kit or plug rather, plug that in. This'll turn on and that's all there is to it. It's, you're not gonna have to pair it or anything like that. It's already linked up and ready to go. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Demco Supplemental Braking System on our 2017 Subaru Crosstrek.